Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So when I was a kid, I had two toys that really stood above the rest, that kind of really changed my whole life and kind of set a trajectory for where I was going to go next. The first was this toy puppet, Pinocchio. I'm sure a lot of people in the room are familiar with Pinocchio. The whole idea of this character that kind of comes to life really stayed with me. It was really kind of a profound moment for me. The second toy was my first home computer, the ZX81. I grew up in Europe. This thing had 1K of RAM, and I played my first video game on, on, on this computer. And I still remember that I broke into the program, and I could see lines of basic code. And that just changed my life. The whole idea of computers and stories, and the combination of being able to tell stories using computer technology was really something that got me inspired. So I've been very fortunate. So growing up in a tiny island in the Mediterranean, I left home when I was 17, and I left my family. And I came to America, the land of freedom and opportunity. And I've been really fortunate because that early inspiration to tell stories and use technology, I was able to come to the United States, right here in California, and really work on some amazing projects that involve the use of technology to tell stories. So I worked on movies and theme park rides. And also, more, more recently, I got to work on video games, which was really, really neat. Now, over the last several years, there have been many, many great examples of how computers have been used to tell some phenomenal stories that we're totally familiar with, that resonate with people all over the world, whether it's Finding Nemo, which ultimately is a story about a dad that will go to every, all lengths in order to rescue and find their son. Or Avatar, right? This amazing, amazing, beautiful visual graphic story. But ultimately, if you boil it down, it's a story about a tree being cut down. It's a cautionary tale. But it's told in this amazing way. And so it resonates with people all over the world. So 20 years ago, OK, that's, that's longer than most of you have been around. 20 years ago, the World Wide Web was introduced to the world. Right? That's, think about the fact that so people, when I grew up, I wasn't able to search for anything I wanted to, or be able to buy music, or connect with friends on Facebook as easily. It's just been a phenomenal way to, uh, of a phenomenal transformation that just happened only in the last 20 years. So Wikipedia is a perfect example, right? There's billions of pages that are viewed every single day. But what's behind this is about 90 to 100,000 people that are working together. They're collaborating. They're all you know, submitting, making edits. And a project like this would simply not have been possible before the web. I still remember the first time I used Google Earth. I mean, it's like no big deal, right? What's Google Earth? But actually, the first time using that, you know, and kind of holding this globe in your hand and being able to rotate, you know, interact and zoom in, and knowing that there were people all over the world doing the same thing was a phenomenal seminal moment and kind of really stayed with me. So about 10 years ago, I was free diving in the Caribbean Sea, big blue turquoise waters. And there was one moment when I looked behind me and there was this gigantic 80-foot humpback whale that was swimming right towards me. Within a few moments, I was at arm's length from this amazing being. And we made eye contact. And her eyes were the size of my face. I mean, it was an unbelievable moment. And that moment of connection totally inspired me to figure out a way to use technology and stories to share the oceans with the world and to connect people with the ocean and with each other. Around the same time, about 10 years ago, is when I met another amazing being. This is my friend and co-founder, Scott Yara. And for the last 10 years, we've been riffing and thinking about, you know, there's this amazing thing that's the web, and this ocean is just that's so important to our vitality. How are we going to you know, get together and do something? So we did. And last year, we joined forces in earnest. And we created a project called The Blue, which I'm super excited to share with you today. So The Blue is a global mission to create the entire ocean on the web. All of the hundreds of thousands of varieties of species 
we're going to bring online to the web, where each species and habitat is a unique work of art created by folks like yourselves. We're opening up the platform like Wikipedia, and we're allowing digital artists and software developers and painters and musicians to collaborate together to create all of the known species of aquatic life. So let's take a look. The blue is a digital underwater world like you've never seen before. I think what the blue represents is for the first time can the internet itself define a new media, really at a scale I think the world's never seen before. The blue is the possibility to work with thousands, tens of thousands of artists around the world. The really interesting thing about the blue is how it brings the biology and the you know activism of conservation and the beauty as well as the sort of uh, grassroots participatory maker thing. You can explore the ocean and travel to locations all around the world as easily as browsing the web. You can choose different camera views and interact directly with the ocean life. Every species and habitat is a unique work of art created by digital artists and developers from all over the world. You can collect a wide variety of species and easily add them to your ocean. Not only can you collect ocean life, you can easily share them with your friends. Imagine a hammerhead shark swimming around in your ocean on your computer. You connect with a friend and your shark swims over to their computer across the web. My name is Mike Hosgrave. I'm from the UK. My name is Nazamur. I'm from Tokyo. My name is Raya Gerkes. I'm from Egypt, Alexandria. My name is Henry Arismendi from Venezuela. My name is Hallie Bird. I live in Auckland, New Zealand, and I love the blue. My name is Peter French here in Burlington, Ontario, Canada. I'm going to be using the blue, and I would encourage other people around the world to do exactly the same. We're just getting started. Join the movement. Dive into the blue. Cool, so I'm gonna share with you some screenshots of the blue. So one of the key aspects is figuring out how to inspire people with the beauty of the ocean. So a lot of emphasis goes into creating every species and ensuring that it's a true depiction of the ocean, of the creature in the ocean. So as a user, when you log in, you can explore different habitats, you can travel to different locations and see the different species swimming around. And you can also get to click on the individual species to find out information about them. So every, every fish kind of maps to a database so there's information about each species that you can learn about. You can also find out about the artist who created that particular species. And another key aspect of it is that you can connect with other people. So you can log in with your Facebook profile or your own identity, and you can discover other people around the world that are also in the blue exploring at the same time. And the key part of kind of creating the sense that this, this whole connected world where this ocean life is swimming across the web, we get to because the fish will literally swim from your iPad out to your PC to perhaps a museum. We're already working with museums around the world where they're installing the blue. And then also to various classrooms all around the world to kind of really create the sense of connectivity. A big part of it, too, is really raising awareness. So the ultimate goal here for us is to get more people to connect with the ocean and understand what's going on. Because in order to really care for something, you have to know about it first. Right? So this is kind of a way to get your head underwater without getting wet. And lastly, what I'll leave you with is, um, you know, the key point for us, it's not like we're a digital studio up in LA and we're creating this. The blue is actually being created by folks like yourselves. You can, everyone can participate in the actual creation of the experience, which is really exciting for us and for everybody involved. And when you kind of think about the fact that, you know, so I came from Malta, fine, and I'm in America now, but really, it, not only is America the land of opportunity, but the world is the land of opportunity, right? It's an ocean of opportunity, and because of the web and because of all of the learnings of the last you know, several generations, we're now at a point where you can be whoever you want to be, wherever you are in the world. And more than ever, the world is truly our oyster. 
So with that, we're just getting started. I invite you to uh, sign up for the blue.com and participate. And um, that's it. Thank you very much.